Navy sails an aircraft carrier through disputed South China Sea. The U.S. Navy sailed an aircraft carrier through the South China Sea in a show of force against China in the midst of disputes over the strategically crucial trade zone. A group of Filipino generals, officials, and journalists join the crew of the USS Ronald Reagan to watch FAA-18 fighter jets take off and land on the massive nuclear-powered carrier as it made its way to Manila for a port call. Armed cruisers kept watch a few miles away, the Associated Press reported. The motto of this carrier is Peace Through Strength, Rear Admiral Carl Thomas, Commander of Combined Task Force 70 and Carrier Strike Group 5, told journalists. The carrier's presence sends a message as diplomatic talks continue among countries staking a claim to the tiny islands in the South China Sea, said Thomas. China, Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Brunei have been in dispute over territorial claims in the area for decades, but China's recent militarization of the Spratly Islands has heightened tensions. The Chinese People's Liberation Army has built military depots and airstrips on islands that were once tiny, barren plots in what experts believe is an attempt to assert Beijing's authority over the region. We just think that folks should follow the international law, and our presence allows us to provide that security and stability in the background for these discussions to take place, Thomas said. About $3.4 trillion worth of trade passed through the South China Sea in 2016, according to the Center for Strategic and International Studies. That was about 21% of all global trade that year, making the South China Sea a valuable prize for the parties involved in the territorial dispute. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte, who has had an on-again off-again diplomatic relationship with the United States, recently took interest in the U.S. Navy, calling on America to park the Seventh Fleet off China's coast in response to a June incident involving a Chinese vessel that rammed a Filipino fishing boat. I will join them, I will ride on the boat with Admiral of the U.S., Duterte said in July. In March, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo promised the United States would continue to guarantee its existing security arrangement for the defense of the Philippines should the country be attacked. Another sea trial for China's first homegrown aircraft carrier suggests technical problems. China's first homegrown aircraft carrier is undergoing another sea trial, straight after four days of testing, suggesting that the Plan Navy may have identified technical problems requiring immediate attention, military observers said. The latest sea trial of the 65,000-ton Type 001A was indirectly confirmed by a no-sail zone notice issued by the Liaoning Maritime Safety Administration on Monday. Ships have been warned not to enter a 3,400-square-kilometers area in the north of the Yellow Sea for safety reasons. The no-sail zone near Dalian Port, where the warship was built, is almost the same area used for last week's sea trial. A military source said the area was chosen to facilitate operations and emergency support. Although the previous sea trial was not officially announced, the Type 001A was seen returning to Dalian Port on Sunday after completing the testing. Song Zhuangpeng, a military commentator for Hong Kong-based Phoenix Television, said the back-to-back -back sea trials indicated there could be technical issues with the warship. The fact the aircraft carrier needed to be tested again within two days suggests that the Navy may have found some technical problems in last week's sea trial that needed to be fixed immediately, he said. It's fairly typical before an aircraft carrier is officially commissioned, we can expect to see more intensive sea trials in the future, military enthusiasts following the Type 001A's development spotted a J-15 fighter jet in a helicopter on its deck when the vessel was tugged from Dalian Port to the Yellow Sea on Thursday. A Beijing-based military source said takeoff and landing tests were conducted in last week's sea trial, 
noting that the proximity of the location to port enabled the Navy to better manage the testing and provide support in case of emergency. Takeoff and landing tests are the most challenging and complicated parts of the sea trials, and that's why the location is not far from the coast, just in case there's an accident, the SOAR said. He added that more testing would follow because the Type 001A was built to operate as a warship rather than a training platform like the Liaoning, China's first and only operational aircraft carrier. China has built more than 50 J-15 fighter jets and trained dozens of aircraft carrier-based pilots, and the squad is big enough now to deploy on both the Liaoning and the Type 001A. The source said Liaoning started life as a Soviet Kuznetsov class vessel and was unfinished when China bought it from Ukraine in 1998. It underwent 10 sea trials before it was commissioned in 2012. China built the Type 001A based on the design of the Liaoning and launched it in April 2017. In May last year, the Defense Ministry said the Type 001A had met initial operating capability. IOC requirements. But Beijing based naval expert Li Ji said that according to his information, the vessel had yet to satisfy all the IOC requirements. The Liaoning has sailed on the high seas in several naval drills now, with different carrier battle group formations, but the Type 001A still needs more time before it can meet all the IOC requirements, Li said.